Hey, I am back with another video and today I got some tea for y'all. In today's episode, we will be talking about Martin Luther King Jr. Everybody knows that MLK is the man who wanted peace between whites and blacks in America. The man who wanted to put an end on poverty and corruption in the USA. While did y'all know that MLK had a dark side that people tend to ignore? While in this episode, we will focus on the shady side of the King of Love. But before I go any further, please subscribe and hit the like button. Also share and comment on this video. I would really appreciate it. Disclaimer. I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Martin was born January 15, 1929 and grew up during the Great Depression in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin was the middle child and had an older sister and a younger brother. Martin's father was a minister and later became a pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church. At home, Martin would be forced to recite Bible verse aloud instructed by his father at the dinner table. King's father would use whipping to discipline him, he would use his own children to whip each other. King's father remarked, King was the most peculiar child whenever you whipped him. He'd stand there, and the tears would run down, and he'd never cry. Once when King witnessed his brother emotionally upset his sister, he took a telephone and knocked out his brother with it. When Martin and his brother were playing at their home, his brother slid from a banister and hit their grandmother, causing her to fall unresponsive. Kane, believing her dead, blamed himself and attempted suicide by jumping from a second-story window. Upon hearing that his grandmother was alive, King rose and left the ground where he had fallen. Kane experienced racism at a young age. He had a white neighborhood friend, and they would play together, and one day, his friends stopped coming out to play with him. Apparently, it had been said that they didn't want their son to play with young Martin because he was colored. King told this to his father and King Sr. educated him on the history of slavery and racism in America. By knowing this knowledge, King developed hatred for all white people, but King Sr. told him as Christians we spread love and not hatred. King Jr. also saw his father stand up to racism, segregation, and discrimination. He saw his father organize civil rights marches in Atlanta to protest against voting right discrimination. When King was growing up, he got into physical altercation with neighborhood boys or sometimes he would use his words to win a fight. At an event for Gone with the Wind premiere, MLK performed with his church corps dressed as slaves to entertain the white audience. King was very smart, especially at a young age. At age 13, he was the youngest assistant manager of a newspaper company. He also skipped ninth grade and he garnered a large vocabulary from reading dictionaries and consistently used his expanding lexicon. He was getting A's and B's grades in high school. While in high school, King was finding himself. He began to develop interest in public speaking, history, sociology, and English. He also began to like fashion such as wearing suits and patent leather shoes. Martin joined the football team and he worked in the field picking tobacco for $4 per hour. He also began to flirt with girls a lot and he and his brother would have competition on who would get the girl. King would flit from chick to chick and his brother couldn't keep up. At age 19, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in sociology at Morehouse College. After Morehouse College, he decided to further his education. He enrolled in Crozer Theological Seminary, and while he was a student there, he fell in love with a white woman named Betty Moitz. King was deeply in love and wanted to marry her. They kept their relationship hidden from their parents, especially Martin, because he didn't want his mother to know about her. But his friend disagreed and said that interracial marriage would ruin their chance of becoming a pastor in the South. Blacks and white would develop animosity towards their relationship. King tearfully told his friend about having to break up with her after six months of being together. One of his friends stated that he never recovered from that breakup. King graduated with a Bachelor of Divinity. After graduation from Crozer, he decided to go to Boston University for his doctoral. He met a man named Hester, and they became friends. Hester and Martin would have bowl sessions in their apartment discussing sermon-style theology and social issues. King received his Ph. D. degree with a dissertation. According to sources, MLK's dissertation was plagiarized and did not give credit to the original writer. While he was in Boston University, he asked a friend to find him a Southern girl. That friend mentioned fellow student Coretta Scott and King decided to take a chance with her. They started to call each other on the phone and eventually they went on an actual date. King saw Scott as an ideal wife and they got married in 1953. They had four children together, Yolanda, MLK III, Dexter, and Bernice King. King wanted Coretta to be a housewife and a mother while he led the civil rights movement. Their marriage had many flaws. King was a notorious cheater. While he was on the road, he slept with countless women. Allegedly, he had extramarital affairs with 40 to 45 women. 
King would have sex with groupies and prostitutes, and he would pay these prostitutes with the money from the association he was involved in, which was called Southern Christian Leadership Conference. He would also beat them if they acted out. He would also have orgies with multiple women along with other pastors. It had been said that King witnesses a pastor raping a woman and all he did was watch and laugh and instruct the pastor on how to take advantage of the woman. It's also made a statement jokingly saying he was the founder of the international advancement of pussy eaters. He and a fellow pastor would talk about female parishioners would be suitable for unnatural and natural sex acts. King would have others participate in orgies and many people have described degeneracy and depravity. A former prostitute stated that he had a threesome with King and he described it as the worst orgy that she has ever experienced. Martin also had a lot of orgies and sex act with white women and all of this had been recorded by the FBI. They referred to King as a monkey on the records and they did not intervene when rape occurred in the hotel room. When one woman refused to participate, King would try to guilt trap her into believing that it would help her soul. It has also been said that he would go to C.L. Franklin's house and partake in orgies. Allegedly, C.L. Franklin offered young Retha to Martin for sex. According to rumors, it had been said that he would abuse Coretta and the children. He also wanted her to experience sexual affairs of her own. Coretta stated that he would only spend 10 hours a month at home. He also fathered a secret daughter with another woman in Los Angeles, and they are currently alive and refuse to let the world know about her and Martin Luther King. Allegedly, King had mistresses all over the United States. He had one in New York and Louisville to name a few. King used sex as a way to reduce anxiety, especially when he was a political figure and being a leader of a movement and dealing with racism was a lot for Martin. Coretta knew about his affairs and orgies, but all she could do was ignore it and turn a blind eye. The FBI sent a tape of Anna Kay having sex with an unknown woman and according to Coretta, she couldn't think much of it. Before King was assassinated, he had one of his mistresses accompany him. The mistress was with him until his death. Martin was not a saint. He was a human being who had flaws just like us all. Despite his weakness, he was a great man who wanted the world to be a better place. Alright, this is the end of this video. Please make sure to comment, like and share this video and most importantly subscribe to my channel. Peace and spread love. Bye.